Welcome back. I have to tell you that I was stunned uh, to learn that one in five high school girls are physically or sexually hurt by a dating partner and that many teens think that abuse in a relationship is normal. These statistics concern me personally as I have two adult daughters, a 13-year-old stepdaughter at home and a 9-year-old granddaughter. Now, a frightening fact is that victims of teen dating violence often don't go to someone for help and live with it in silence. With me today is Annalisa Deal, youth advocate with the Network Against Domestic Abuse, and Rachel Walsh, family violence victim advocate, also with the network. Thanks for coming in the studio today. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. So this is, uh, it, this is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, and you work at the Network Against Domestic Abuse, which is an incredibly important organization. What I, what I really want to focus on is, because parents are watching, teachers mm -hmm. are watching, what does teen dating violence look like? I mean, are we talking walking around with black eyes or, or what? Um, no, most likely a lot of times they're, in the beginning there's not going to be physical marks. I mean, it's a grooming process. A lot of times in the beginning of a relationship it, it just starts off as they think everything, you know, everything's fine. It's a new relationship a lot of times. And then you get into maybe he's he's walking her to class and then he meets her outside of the door. Or he's telling her that he doesn't like the sweater she wears, maybe she should wear different clothes. Or, and eventually it can progressively lead to violence, but you know, you could be in a relationship for, for five years that's just strictly verbal abuse, and that's just as bad as the physical abuse. You they said, I'm sorry, you said it was a grooming thing. Does that mean they like cover up bruises or stuff? No, or? grooming, what I mean by grooming is, I mean they start out, they'll start out by telling you, you know, you look nice. They, they get oh, you oh, to... See to accept them and realize, hey, this guy's great. He's, oh, okay. he's you know, I found Mr. Right. At, and, and then progressively it leads into. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so then it's like slowly getting bad. We also wanted to mention, like, I think for the parents to recognize it most, we do have a bunch of warning signs like extreme jealousy or excessive anger, using force, controlling behavior. But a parent might not notice that because mm. they're not in the relationship. I think the thing a parent or a teenager would notice is a change in behavior. Like they might start changing their clothes either because they're trying to hard hide marks or bruises or maybe because he tells her that he doesn't like her dressing like that. She needs to cover up more and not be attractive to other people. And that's tough because of normal changes in, in the adolescent years where they try different things, experimentation. Yeah, so there's... It's also kind of like if they're starting to withdraw from the family, there's changes in appetite or their behavior changes. It's not definitely a sign, like if you see that happening to your kid, like you said, like it could be normal, but being able to talk to them and find out more about it because it could be a bad sign too. You know, I've got a background in psychology and I've always been stumped with what you mentioned, that they think it's normal. Where, where, where does that come from? Is it the, is it the whole control uh, thing that's coming from the significant other or the boyfriend? Or I think a lot of times they think the abuse is normal. They're 16, 17 years old. A lot of times it's their first and second relationship. Um, you know, they've never really experienced something with uh, outside of, you know, a parental relationship or something like that. So this is a whole new experience. And they might not be talking to their parents about it, so they might be thinking, yeah, th you know, this is normal. He is a little controlling. You know, maybe he does tell me a little bit too much what to do. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of teens aren't educated about it, and they just think that, you know, this is how a relationship is supposed to go. And but then a lot of them get their ideas from relationships from other peers who are also in the same boat with not really uh, knowing what's happening. But then also the media, like sometimes on TV shows, they're not the healthiest relationships. If they're getting their tips from like the Jersey Shore or something, they're not going to be in a great relationship. And it's, uh, it's amazed me because you hear about a lot of cases where the adults and the, the parents had a very healthy relationship, but th th it happens to the teen girls. But you're, you're right, it's what they're watching. Or it's the influence, well, my friends are all experiencing it, so it must be okay. And then even if things start to feel normal and they, like, try and ask the boyfriend or girlfriend about it, because some people will do that, and then, of course, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is completely normal. I've done this with all my other girlfriends or something like that. Quickly, um, what, do you, what is it you each do with the network? Um, I'm a family violence victim advocate, which means I go to Rockville Court 
and uh, meet with victims of domestic abuse as well as um, if a brother and sister are arrested or a mother and a, a child and um, make sure their wishes are passed along to the proper channels. Yeah. I'm a youth advocate so I work with um, kids and teenagers anywhere from 0 to 17 helping work with the parents or doing counseling with the kids or we have different support groups and play groups that they can come to. Your role is, both of your roles are so important with this issue. You know, I, I want to uh, I want to take a look at a short clip and ask your opinion on it. Um, you may have noticed that my commercial breaks are filled with public service announcements with important social messages. One in particular that just ran during the previous commercial break, if you didn't notice, has to do with the harassment that some teens experience over their cell phones. This seemingly funny PSA carries a very big message for teens and parents. Um, I have the 60-second version that I want to run. Have a look. Gee morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on the way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. So it was interesting what you saw. Now they were doing it humorously because they're having the boyfriend following the, the girlfriend around dressed as a cell phone, representing that his cell phone is saying all these things. In fact, some of the things I didn't even understand, I had to ask a teen <laughs> what some of the things he was saying. But what's your take on what you just saw? Well, I think that um, the thing that makes that hard is that these days so many people text all the time to all different people. So you might not notice when it's becoming excessive. But I think the point is when it makes the person feel uncomfortable and when the reactions are bad. Like if they're always asking you, hey, what are you doing? Like it might seem cute for a while, but then if it's like if you don't answer back in 10 seconds, it's why aren't you answering my text? Why aren't you paying attention to me? And things like that would definitely be something to look out for because if the person's feeling uncomfortable getting on, then that's not cute or loving. So what can, what can parents and teachers do? And if it's different... I'm interested in that. What can they do if they see the signs and they're worried about a teen? I mean, there's there's a lot of different things. Because there's a lack of education for domestic violence, it's almost like a stigma to talk about it. So, I mean, they there's resources out there. There's domestic violence agencies out there in your area that, that are willing to help. Um, you know, they can always call them. There's a statewide hotline number that they can call for help. Um, the agencies are willing to, to go in and facilitate things to, to better educate people. Um, one of the best things parents can do if they're worried is, and the child is going to come talk to them, you just have to believe somebody because that's a lot of times some, they're not going to come talk. They're not going to open up easily. You have to allow them to come to you. You can't force an issue. If you do have concerns, I mean, a parent is going to be worried if their child's in a relationship like this. But you have to be able to allow the child to come to you when the child is ready. Um, they're not just going to open up to you in one day. It's, it's, it's a process, but the best thing you can do is be there for them whenever they're ready um, and just be supportive. I think another thing that I like to do is sometimes if you try and talk to kids about like big serious issues like domestic violence, they might not really understand or they might be quick to be like, well, that's not happening to me. So one of the things that our agency likes to take as approach is teaching healthy relationships and making sure they just know what is a good relationship and what's going to make them happy. And if that's not what's happening in their relationship, it'll kind of cue them in that maybe there is something going on and I should talk to someone about it. And see, that's, that's what ties in directly to what I do because parents who have a stronger, tighter bond with the child is more, more likely to have the child to open up to them and mm -hmm. admit to not maybe, like you said, not right away, but they are more inclined to eventually do that. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being here to, to, to bring this awareness out even more because it's so important and it seems like it's on the increase. I mean, the cell phone is just one piece of it, but there's a, it's much, much bigger than that. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. You. This show may be about helping parents raise cooperative kids, but it's also about helping parents become better parents. The intent of my next segment coming up is to inform parents about a dangerous activity that may, many teens and tweens are engaging in. You won't want to miss this, so we'll be right back.